Stage 5, Investing and Casting. The first thing that's done before casting is the margins check, the most important part of the restoration really. So we run around it with a hot wax knife just to make sure that uh, the, the wax hasn't shrunk away from the margin at all. And then we can just cut back, nice clean edge. And we're ready. That would have been done all the way around. So, a couple of spruing waxes here just to show the different, there's different sizes. With the gold we can use the thin spruing wax because it flows readily. We use a little bit of sticky wax just on one of the cusps to stick the spruing wax to, like so. It seems a bit counterintuitive to sprue to the bit that you've just spent the last probably 20 minutes making look lovely, but um, when you see it in the in the moulds coming up in a bit, you'll see why it's been put there. So we're just making the wax nice and flush uh, or into the into the uh, wax pattern, so we don't have any creases in the wax because mm -hmm. they'll come out as positives in the refractory material. Mm -hmm which are likely to break off when the metal gets mm -hmm. shot in. Just decreasing the length of the sprue here. The length of the sprue is quite important. Uh, you'll see when we mount it in the ring former. This is the casting ring and the ring liner. And that allows the refractory, refractory material to expand mm -hmm. um, as we heat it up in the furnace. Yeah, and those of you who you remember your materials maybe, we'll know that the silica based material expands rather suddenly over about 600 degrees C, um, whereas the metal won't, it would just expand gently, so the, 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 the line is there just to cushion that extra expansion. We want this expansion to occur because um, as the molten metal cools and solidifies, of course it will shrink, mm -hmm. so the patterns made, invested, the whole lot's expanded mm -hmm vials heating it up and then the metal shot in and then the whole lot shrinks down to the original size together so we have to get the match between the two materials correct. This has been worked out over many many years yeah. um, mm. and is accurate to many parts per million these days. Yeah. Gold and cristobalite tend to be the, the, the best match so that's why they're yeah. more favourable. Oh too much. Yeah the sprue was a bit long yeah. there. We need the pattern about um, five millimeters beneath the top of the casting ring. Yeah. It's about, um, if you imagine the gold coming rushing up the sprue, it's got to displace the air that's already in the mould and the refractory investment is quite porous but only to an extent so we need the pattern to be about five millimeters from the end so there's uh, enough material to be strong but not enough that the air can't sort of seep through Escape it quickly. Through. Yeah. So it's a bit of a balance, there we go. So notice the sprue's been mounted sort of um, straight up and the pattern is at an angle so that um, as the as the metal shoots through it will just fill it all in the direction of the casting. So on the bench now we've got uh, um, some surface tension relieving agent there um, going on that will be um, allowed to dry all the excess blown off and this is um, the Custobolite already mentioned um, which is a um, gypsum Refractory based refractory material, material. gypsum yeah. and plaster of Paris based refractory material and this is um, is quite sturdy up to about 800 odd degrees C. So this is going to be vacuum mixed in the same way as you did for your model material, yep. so hand mixing mm -hmm. to start with. The wetting agent allows this stuff to flow into all the nooks and crannies on the wax mm -hmm. pattern, idea. in the same way as the, the model material did in, in your impression. It tends to look a bit stiffer when you first mix it because it's mixed in very set ratios. You might think, oh my, there's not enough water. But um, it does. It has a reaction in it that does produce the sort of water that you need. It does, Have faith, uh, it'll yeah. work. Right, 30 second mix then. Yeah. This is all written on the back yep. of the packet, so you just follow yeah. the instructions. As really. I was gonna say, we, we tend to check it before we start. Yeah, it's all there. The packets are all pre-weighed and everything, so everything's a little bit simpler making a dye model. Um, yeah. While it's doing this, you're getting your mould and everything onto the vibrating table and checking everything's uh, ready to go. Over to the other bench then. That's just so me blowing off the yeah. excess um, <laughs> the surface tension yeah. reducer. You may, re you may opt to use an airline for yeah. that. We forgot to turn the compressor on. 
So, so you've yeah. already calibrated this to be. It's a quite a gentle vibrate because if it's too vicious, it'll just break the sprue off the bottom. Um, yeah. So we we'll fill up then, mm -hmm. fill fill them fill the mold up yeah. quite slowly. Yeah, you want to look one of those one of those trendy waiters, sort of doing the cocktails. You want a very thin stream, and, and some people get quite expansive with their hand gestures here. There we go. And you want to watch it fill all the nooks and crack it crannies. Now some people get a little uh, brush and paint the refractory onto the um, occlusal surface and fit surface of their pattern and then fill the mould. But it tends to be a bit over fussy. Um, that's set for about half an hour and then into the furnace at mm. about six, seven, it goes six up to 650 degrees. 650 yeah. degrees and it's, it heat soaks in there so it wants yeah. to get up to temperature and then be in there for another 45 mm -hmm. minutes or so. Very this is quickly, the, casting machine. Yeah, this yeah. is the gold going into the, the, the carbon mm -hmm. uh, crucible here, and that's behind the casting machine. And you can see just a little tiny oven, the silver bit yeah, there. That's the silver bit. And that's set, uh, that'll set, be set, we'll show you in a sec. That's a little door just to keep it warm. Mm -hmm. It takes about five minutes to get up to temperature in this mm -hmm. casting machine. There's a, lots of different ways of heating up the metal. You can see there it's set to... 1030. 1030, so we're just waiting for it to get up to yeah. temperature. It happens quite quickly, this process. Um, in about five minutes, you'll be sort of getting ready to cast. Now, you can see the ingots are still intact at the end there. Yeah. Um, and we're looking for them to visibly slump, aren't we, That's to right. form a pool of metal. You can heat this with gas and air yeah. or electric induction. This yeah. is electrical resistance, so it looks works in the same way as you would yeah. at home. Moulds up to temperature then. It needs yeah. to be up that high for the expansion, as we've already mentioned, and to stop the metal freezing, of course, as yeah. it goes in. If it, if it was cold, the metal would just hit it and yeah. solidify straight away. Or, or not to mention a thermal shock, it might just explode. Yeah. yeah. Either so. way, it wouldn't work. <laughs> Now, um, everything now has to fit together, so the crucible with its hole has to fit into the cone shape at the end of the mould, and it can be a bit of a fiddly process, and it's, it's not aided by the fact everything's really hot, and you have to use tongs to do everything. Of course you should be wearing yeah. gloves and yeah. safety, safety, safety gear. And then you shut the door, there's a micro switch on the door, and you can see the machine virtually leaps off the desk. Wallop. Off it goes, yeah. spins around, centrifugal force, pus pushes the metal into the mould. For a number of minutes, about three minutes. Okay, job done. Excellent.